Hello, this is Albert Einstein. History myths fly around at the speed of light. Especially with that new internet thing you all seem to have. Thank goodness, I have a direct connection to Professor Buzzkill, a fellow deep thinker who busts myths and takes names. I am totally stoked. There's a new episode. I was stuck on this new equation anyway. E equals MC something. Something. Nah. Hello, hello, hello there, dear listeners. It's June 12th, Loving Day. Loving Day is being celebrated worldwide. You might think that Loving Day is Valentine's Day, February 14th, but it's not. It's today, June 12th. If you don't know what Loving Day is, let me tell you a story, a love story, in this brief episode. In the 1950s, a 17-year-old young man named Richard fell in love with a neighborhood girl named Mildred. Over the years, they became closer and closer until, in 1958, they married. They were a little uncomfortable with the idea of getting married at home, so they essentially eloped. They went on to have three children and, by all accounts, were completely devoted to each other and remained deeply in love. So it's a fairly straightforward story, probably repeated dozens of times in this country every year and just as often in the rest of the world. Lots of people fall in love and elope. But usually they elope because they're worried about parental disapproval or something like that. Richard and Mildred eloped for a different reason. They couldn't get married in their hometown or even their home state of Virginia because it was illegal. Not because they were too young. By the time they married in 1958, Mildred was 18 and Richard was 24. No, it was illegal for them to marry because of Virginia's 1924 Racial Integrity Act. This law forbade people considered white to marry people considered colored, that is, non-white. You see, Richard was white and Mildred was colored. And in Virginia, as in every southeastern state in the United States, such marriages were illegal until 1967. But Richard and Mildred had grown up in Central Point in Caroline County in eastern Virginia. Central Point was unusual in Virginia and, and in the South because it had been a community with frequent racial mixing for almost a hundred years by the time Richard and Mildred met. Their families knew each other well and were considered friends. But despite the live and let live atmosphere of Central Point, Jim Crow laws and social expectations reigned across Virginia, even though, again, Central Point was the exception. Richard and Mildred couldn't get married legally in Virginia, so they went to Washington, D.C., in 1958, where there were no such restrictions. Again, though, being used to the fluid racial situation in their hometown of Central Point, they eventually returned there and, and set up a home. The Caroline County Police, however, m must have had a sort of Jim Crow spasm. They burst into their home in the early hours of July 11th, 1958, and arrested them under... Virginia's various laws, including the 1924 Racial Integrity Act, the state code, which prohibited interracial couples who had been married in other states from moving to Virginia, and the state's anti-miscegenation laws. Anti-miscegenation laws prohibited racial mixing in terms of sexual relations, marriage, having children. Of course, you're probably thinking this is hugely hypocr hypocritical in a state with a historical tradition of slave owners having sexual relations with female slaves and often, have, often having children with them. But then, as well as now, no realistic person can ever expect a racist society to be morally or legally consistent. In order to avoid imprisonment, 
Richard and Mildred pleaded guilty in early 1959 to violating, quote, the peace and dignity of the Commonwealth of Virginia, end quote. They asked to be allowed to return to Washington, D.C. rather than be jailed, and they were granted that. While living in D.C., however, Richard and Mildred were banned from traveling to Virginia based on all those laws. They wanted to visit family. They wanted to be friends. They felt totally isolated. So they appealed their marriage ban to Attorney General Robert Kennedy in 1964, and he passed their case on to the American Civil Liberties Union. The ACLU, uh, the ACLU took the case and tried to appeal their conviction in the Virginia courts. Now, not surprisingly, the local Caroline County Court, the U.S. District Court for Eastern Virginia, and the Virginia Supreme Court either upheld the original ruling or they kind of sidestepped it by delaying or refusing to hear the case. It then went to the U.S. Supreme Court, which ruled unanimously on June 12, 1967, that Virginia's laws prohibiting interracial marriage were unconstitutional and struck them down. This effectively meant that all such laws in the United States were unconstitutional. Richard and Mildred then happily returned to Virginia as legal man and wife, bringing their three children with him and reuniting with their extended families. If you don't already know about the origins of Loving Day, you might think that it takes its name from the simple act of love, two people being in love with each other and being able to express that love. But throughout this episode, I've neglected to give you Richard and Mildred's last name. It was Loving. It was Richard Loving who met Mildred back in the 1950s. The two of them got married in 1958 and began their lives together. The name of their Supreme Court case was Loving versus Virginia. And the outcome is quite rightly referred to as the Loving Decision of 1967. Loving Day, as a day of celebration, was created in 2004 by Ken Tanabe, a college student. It's gone on to be observed and celebrated almost everywhere, and is often considered the most widely celebrated holiday of its type in the world. Sadly, Richard Loving died in a car accident in 1975, and Mildred Loving died in 2008. They didn't live to see Loving Day become the major celebration that it is. But these two young lovers from Virginia could hardly have done more than they did for equality, justice, and pure decency in our modern world. Please go to LovingDay.org to learn how and where Loving Day is observed and celebrated. You can contribute to its cause, and you can reflect on this very important step forward in American history and society. Happy Loving Day. Talk to you next week. Hello, this is Lady Buzzkill. If you simply must follow my husband's deluded podcast hobby, you can also find him on Facebook, Twitter at Buzzkill Prof, and Instagram at Professor Buzzkill. You might go to ProfessorBuzzkill.com if you're so inclined and support him on Patreon. Subscribe to his email list, if you must, and shop the Buzzkill bookshelf. The only thing that seems to keep him from making more noise and frightening the horses is that the Professor Buzzkill Show is part of Entertainment One's podcast network. And of course, it's available on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and all major podcast apps. Finally, I suppose I should thank you for listening. So, thank you for listening.